Heavenly Father, I thank you that I'm still alive on this earth. I thank you that through every satanic attack that was issued and every spirit that came against me, that you brought me through, you delivered me. Holy Spirit, I thank you for cultivating in me and teaching me the fruit of self-control. I thank you, Lord, for all the battles and the wars that I've gone through with you. You have elevated me. You have promoted me. You have strengthened me. And you have not, most importantly, allowed me to fail and give up on the faith. I no longer have a will, Jesus. I'm submitted, I'm subjected, yielded to you. I thank you for the godly counsel you're bringing in my life, for the rebuke for the deliverance of things that were upon me that I didn't even realize, for men and warriors of God that can fight devils and break things off my life that I didn't even know were there. I thank you for the submission, the humility, and I thank you for the increase, Father. I'm a prisoner for Jesus Christ, a slave to righteousness, a son of God. I don't belong to this world nor the systems of this world. I'm not a slave to the economy of this world. I'm not impoverished by the banking systems of this world. I'm rich in eternity because of you, Lord Jesus. I receive what you did on the cross. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I choose to sacrifice my worldly pleasures and live it in sin, and I choose to commit my ways and to live a holy lifestyle unto you. I thank you, Father, that you are sanctifying me. It's a process. It's a journey. It's not about getting it all right overnight. It's constant growth, it's pushing, it's persevering. I thank you for the word of prophecy that all the sowing and planting and persevering and diligently seeking you, I thank you that there is a rich harvest coming. I thank you for that my ministry is being launched, your ministry in my life. And I just thank you for remaining with me, God. It doesn't always make sense to serve you when everybody's prospering, it looks all good on the outside living in sinful ways, but I'm in my room praying. When there's war on my life, I just get on my knees and pray instead of go out and do what everybody else would do. It doesn't always make sense, Lord. But I know that you are God. I know that you are Jehovah. I know that you are Yahweh. I know that all things are within you. And I know that you are the creator of this earth and this life. And I know that heaven and hell is real, my King. And I'm going to choose to be washed in your blood, Jesus. And I represent you. I dedicate my life and everything I do unto you. Not just passing by and not just attending church on Sunday to feel good. But I choose, despite all the agony, what doesn't make sense, the war and the battle, to serve you. And to do what you've called me to do. And to bring as many people as I can to you. In whatever way possible. And I just bless you, Holy Spirit. And I ask that you would take control of this movie, this video, this session, this sermon. That you would speak through me. It would not be of me, but you, my God. And that deliverance and power and strength and revelation would flow on this core. And the hearers would be healed, revitalized, refreshed. New revelation would be dropped in their spirit. That you would open their mind. That you would reward them and increase their understanding. And convict us of sin and repentance. So that we can get the blessing and the inheritance what rightfully belongs to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Testimony. Since Pentecost Sunday, power poured out, but Satan came strong against the ministry. What I was doing. The devil always fights my relationships, my connections, because he knows the power and what I'm able to do and what I can get accomplished in relationships connected to the ministry. I've been alone for a long time, but he threw many spirits at me. There were things that I were operating in that wasn't the will of Father. I had much zeal, wanted to rip the kingdom of hell apart, but there's a time for that. There's a place for that. There's a purpose for that. Even though I was encountering Jesus in supernatural ways, he came in my room, heaven opened up. The power, the experience that I had with the Lord, how he came to me 
and made himself known as the father to me, not just me calling him the father. And as I was fellowshipping with my brother and as we stretched and tarried in the Lord for days, staying up till two and the three in the morning like we was on drugs, but we was pushing in God. I still encountered the Lord, his glory, went to a new level, increased, but there were still spirits and things that I was operating in. But the pastor came to me, and they prayed for me, things broke off in my life, and the devil fought me hard because I received a deliverance. I received full freedom. And it's a glorious thing. And the enemy tried to throw, he tried to make me question my entire walk with God. He tried to throw spirits of shame, guilt, and I've been fighting them for some days now. But Jesus is washing that with his blood, and my identity remains in Christ. So that's a testimony, and that's amazing. And I have overcome the spirit of lust and pornography. God has delivered me. He's put a fire in my feet against these principalities that have been waging war against me. He's caused me to rise higher in the spirit higher in my authority and I love God the enemy has attacked me strong ever since I first said yes to Jesus because the Lord is training me as a warrior in the spirit he's training me as a warrior to shield the body of Christ to fight teaching me how to deal with principalities but I'm learning the Holy Spirit was showing me I'm operating in the other fruits but I have to learn self-control just like when Jesus went to the mountain and he was full with the glory in his own time, but when you come down, that's the time to operate in the fruits of the Spirit. To be gentle, that's the time to bring people to Christ. You don't want to be talking 100 miles, we're going we gonna to cut the head of the devil off, we're going to rip every principality, we're going to shut Satan down. That's how I get, I get violent. But I have to learn how to control that, and there's a time for warfare on God's regiment when it's time for warfare in my realm. See, what you do in secret, you're able to do so much more in secret. And you're able to move in high levels of power. But when you go to the public, when you go to the youth ministry, when you go to the body, you have to learn how to have self-control. And I'm learning that. And God is bringing counsel into my life. Because one thing that I lacked was counsel. I have zeal. God is filling me with revelation, wisdom, the gifts, power. The fruit is there. It's being shown. But I still lack counsel. Which brings me into the right order of God, which is the will of God. There's a time for everything and I'm learning that. As I make these videos, I'm still growing. I'm still overcoming sin. God is sanctifying me. He's making me holy. And it's just a privilege to still be walking with the Lord. After all these demonic attacks, after all this walking through all this blood, all this sacrifice, it don't make sense in my flesh. In our flesh, it doesn't make sense to serve God. When everybody's out doing their thing, having a good old time, having a blast, living it up, making money, we in our house on our knees praying, going to war. It don't make sense in the flesh. But it's the eternal weight of glory that is being produced within us. And if you really want thing, if you really want the Lord and you really say, I will give up everything but Jesus, I'm ready to do what you have called me to do, there's going to be some suffering. God himself is going to test you. He's going to stretch you over and over and over and over again. There's rest in the Lord, but he's always going to push you higher and deeper and he's always going to be putting you through new things and allowing you to experience new types of attacks so you can have a new experience a new encounter a new revelation which is a new testimony to touch somebody you were never able to touch before because you've now been in their shoes you've understood the climate of the you've entered into the pain that they were going through you've entered into different scenarios and regions of pain and you've had different type of satanic attacks of guilt shame addiction and you've been breaking through these powers of darkness now you carry this high authority and revelation and reward of god and it doesn't always feel good a lot of times you feel like you've done nothing for god because God is making you nothing. He's breaking everything out of us. He's pushing us to the point where we have no choice but to trust him 100%. He's pushing us to the point he's breaking us, pushing us, filleting us like a fish, throwing us in the water to swim, taking us out of the bird nest and throwing us in the air. He is doing it. And if you really want to be a warrior for God and you want the Lord to raise you up as a warrior, a lot of people say that, but very few consist to the very end. A lot of people say that, some begin to fight. They feel good. They feel the power that God gives them. They feel the fulfillment that God gives them, but they get weary and give up. This ain't, this ain't easy. 
We're living in the last days. The demons are moving stronger than ever. The end time strategic wars that Satan has issued are being cast out. It's moving like you ain't never felt. The war that's being waged upon earth right now is something that the world has never seen. Nobody in the body of Christ, the people that have prophesied, they're not living. We're living in the darkest age. The worser than Sodom and Gomorrah. Back then, you got to think in the biblical times. How many people you think was on earth? Maybe 10,000, maybe 100,000. Now you have over 8 billion. The murder rate, the devil worship rate, the enchantments, the witchcraft worldwide is more worse than it has ever been. We know, we know the apostles, most of them died. We know people got beheaded. But over a million people a year now in the age we're living in, over a million people a year are getting beheaded because they believe in Christ. It's 50 trillion times worse than what we experienced and what we read about in the biblical days. And see, we're, see, we're so, we don't realize the blessings that God has us. We always, because of our success agenda, we want to do big things. We want to travel, but we don't realize God is protecting us and preserving us. Why billions of people are getting their head chopped off. Why there's AIDS running rampant. Why there's disease. People don't even have purified water. God is preserving us. He's protecting us. And we don't even realize how blessed we are. But yeah. I'm going to transition and just release the knowledge. I've been gaining knowledge. I've been staying in the presence of God. I've been learning from my mistakes, my weaknesses. I apologized to the pastor and I repented to God. I said, Father, if I operated in any spirit because I afflicted the body of Christ. See, it's a difference when we struggle with sin in our own life. But when we start to go out and preach... When we start to go out and move in the ministry and we're operating in sin, no matter how we can be very anointed, God is a good God. He's not going to, he's always trying to bless you. He's always trying to anoint you. He's always trying to increase you and he will allow you to continually, as long as you're reading the word persevering, you will automatically increase. He will not stop that. But when you, this is what, this is the dangerous part. But when you're living in sin, it can twist and pervert the anointing. It can twist and pervert all the gifts. Even though you people, you talk, Demons tremble, cancer gets healed. Did you know you can, you can be the most a mighty man, woman of God. When you walk in the building, demons run without you saying nothing. Cancer falls, but because you have sin in your life, it twists the miraculous of God. It twists, and that's what happened when I was moving up in the ministry at my church as God launched a youth ministry in His own as He ordained it. And but there was sin, so now I'm living in holiness. Some things broke off of my life, and now I'm living in holiness. And I'm living, in, I'm living in a world record now. I haven't watched porn in the longest than ever. I've been moving stronger in the Lord than ever. I've let go of things. I'm starting to have deliverance and breakthrough in areas that I've been struggling with for a long time. And man, it has been a war. This has been opposite of easy. I've been through. The Lord himself has put me through the fire, the furnace of affliction over. The flame was 800 degrees. I stepped out. He raised it up about 200 degrees, threw me back in it, raised it up about 400 degrees. Demon. It's not just spiritual warfare on Satan's side, but God himself has pushed me. He's put me, allowed me to go through different kind of spirits, different kind of seasons, different kind of battles, different kind of wars. But the eternity that's in me now is like God himself and it's purified in simplicity and I'm learning control. And I feel like I'm completely dead to myself. And God is getting the glory out of my life and he's being able to fill me up. Now let's transition into the knowledge I gain. Everything that I gain, I live by a rule, whatever you want to call it. Everything I gain, I give away for free. All the knowledge I gain, the hours I spent studying, the creation, I give it away for free to anybody that wants it. That key has given me so much revelation, so much knowledge, so much impartation, so much just wisdom, eternal knowledge of the Holy One by just giving it all away for free. We're going to transition into that stage. I impart the revelation, the knowledge, the keys to the kingdom, the power of God, whatever is transferable, transferable in this presence, in this tangible anointing, and in this session, and in this study. I command you to experience God. I release the hand of God, the angels to surround you, your, the gifts inside of you to be stirred up in your mind and in your soul and in your spirit to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ is the only way to God, eternal life, and the kingdom of heaven. You know that, claim that, believe that, spend time with the Lord, get around people that are anointed, seek the face of God. God is not a drug. You don't just hit it and because you don't get high, you give up. He's looking for relationship. 
Stay coming, stay growing, stay persevering, sow seeds, sacrifice, have times where you fast. It's a relationship, letting go of one thing at a time. But let's transition. I bless you and release the fire of God on you in Jesus' name. You got my phone? I'm learning how to simplify things. Reading is amazing. If you stay reading books of knowledge, have books by your side, have books on your computer, have audio books, man, shh. You get to a point of understanding and realization and knowledge, it just, your life will become over rich, over powerful, and above even being over rich and over powerful, you'll be filled with the throne of God and who He is in Christ, and just, it'll just take you to like the wind, how the wind covers and just blows through everything, all eternity, all accomplishments, all of film, fulfillment, the wind of the Spirit, you'll be in it and you'll just blow past all of it. It's amazing, this knowledge. Knowledge, above all you're getting, get understanding. The Lord once spoke to me to tell his people to sow their seeds like paying their bills. You can sow your way out of anything, debt, sickness, disease, but most people ain't willing to sow. They tithe, which is their, there's a difference between tithing and sowing. Tithing is giving your normal portion, your little 10%, but sowing is where you go above 10%. You sow a seed here, you sow a seed here, and you put a declaration on it. I decree financial breakthrough. I decree healing. The enemy's attacking me. I always have seeds ready to sow. In case Satan wants to war against me, I always have something to back up on, and that's a seed. I always ready to sow. I don't make a lot of money, but I've learned how to sow. And by me, even in my minimum wage job, by me sowing the seeds and learning how to sow, I have gained more riches than anybody on this earth that has made billions and millions of dollars. By sowing spiritually, eternally, and just in the banks and vaults of heaven, what I have gained by sowing. Even though I work at a minimum wage job, I have more than people that have billions and millions and millions of dollars. I have eternity. The reality is that you cannot be a periodic giver and expect to live in the blessing of God. This is why the Bible teaches that the generous soul is the one that will increase. In other words, increase requires consistency and generosity. 80% of people who give offerings in church end up frustrated because they never embrace this principle. Giving is not a spiritual lottery. It's a lifestyle. You cannot gamble with your seed. You must commit to it. The good news is that everything can change today if you're one of the people that would give here and there or from time to time and you've been frustrated. You can pick up where you left off and get back on the right track in your giving. And if you do so, according to Psalms 21 and 3, it says that God will, God will remember all your offerings. God will remember all your offerings. God will be sure you see the reward of all your sacrifices if you return to his financial plan. He will prosper you in your finances. He will bring you promotion in a car. But this is where a lot of us fell on his timing. See, right now I didn't even realize the Lord was showing me I was in a, I was in a desert se season. And there were certain sins that kept having me go around the mountain. But now that I'm breaking through the sins and I'm learning the details, the small details that God wants me to work on, the little spirits and the little attitudes and the little habits and the little motions God is changing me, the tiny things, I'm moving forward. He's already laid out a land for us, prosperity, treasure, financial abundance, overcoming and all that. We just have to get to a point and we have to be ready. It's not God that's waiting to get ready. He's already ready. We have to get ready. He's already laid it out. Come back, camera. There's so many free apps of knowledge and free things you can do to create stuff. Exercise it. Creation and knowledge. I'm working on my creation power, creating quotes, artwork. I'm learning new gifts inside of me and how to worship God through these new gifts. At midnight, I will arise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. There's a quickening and there's suddenlies in the spirit. There's quickenings and suddenlies in the spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to continually soften your spirit to be sensitive to what he is saying and trying to do through you. Always have money and prayer room cards in your wallet. Always be ready to sow a seed and evangelize. I started bringing my wallet to work. I don't like, I, I'm, I'm very big on comfortability. I don't like having a lot of stuff juggling. I have to be comfortable, organized in my home when I operate, when I gain knowledge, when I pray, when I intercede, when I fast, when I fight. 
But I started bringing my wallet that has money in it, my bank card, and it has my church cards in it. Bring people in. Don't just tell them about the Lord or say, God bless you. Bring them, show them a church card. Online, show them the ministry and give them the link to come in. Bring them into the ministry. Bring them in. Bring them in. And you have to ask, we're always trying to be hard, tough, strong, but you have to ask, that's, there's a time to be strong and a warrior for God. That's what we are. But you have to ask in your own time with God, not going to war with Satan, not even approaching the people, not even teaching, but when your relationship with God, you have to ask in him to soften you, make you soft, like some downy, some downy, quicken paper towels, like some baby angel soft toilet paper. You got to ask God to make your spirit soft because if it's hard, God is gentle. Even though God is the most powerful being in creation, the Holy Spirit is the most gentleness being and soft. So fabric, so delicate. So you have to learn how to speak gently. You have to understand the gentleness in the spirit. Me, I always want to be zealous. I'm ready to rip the devil apart. I'm ready to pray with energy. I'm ready to pray with fire. And I've been doing that for a while, so God's taken me to a new realm of him. And this is really where the prophetic comes alive. This is where really where I'm able to operate and get the word of knowledge according to the person I'm speaking to. Because in self because in, in calmness, self-control. Climb up the mountain of God like Jacob. Declare, Lord, I will not let you go unless you bless me. You should have done that early on your bed when you felt stuck. That's me talking to myself. I'm always learning new things and tactics in God, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm always studying men of God and reading books. Okay, I'm going to try this. They said, pray like this. They said, open up the courtrooms of heaven instead of going to war. They said, sow a seed and declare on it. So they said, there's a difference between the anointing and the glory. Worship is tied to the glory. So I'm always learning new things and trying it and experimenting it. And I get blessed. Proclaim God's word with authority and speak forth his promises. Every year, Shema tilled his field. What is tilling the field? Tillage is the agricultural preparation of soil by mechanical agitation of various types, such as digging, stirring and overturning. Examples of human power tilling methods using hand tools include shoveling, picking, mattock work, hoeing, and racking. Tillage can also mean the land that is tilled. You have to take the words in the Bible, get a vocabulary book and break them down. The English language is very watered down, but the Hebrew, the Greek language is very powerful. Words are very powerful. God is a God of words. He created everything with a word. So you create things with words. You bring forth things into your atmosphere by the words you speak. Then it goes deeper. It's the intentions. You become. It integrates with your DNA. Then you become that existence, that creation, and you walk and you rule and reign in it. You create things with your words, but then you think it, you believe it, you become it. Now you rule and reign in that realization and that creation in Christ. And remember, we rule and reign in Christ. Jehovah Shema, the God who is present in the midst of thee. Pray like Paul. The Lord's been showing me how Paul prayed. He was showing me John the Baptist. He's showing me, allowing me to experience different men in the Bible. And it's amazing. Pray like Paul in chains of Christ Jesus. Their greatest healing brings your greatest blessings. Their greatest filling, blessing, treasure released through intercession, intercession is your reward. They are your reward. To understand, see, and operate in this is a prized possession. To understand, see, and operate in this is a prized possession. Not just to hear it, but to operate in it. I'm looking for true intercessors on earth. I will bless thee in magnificent ways through intercession. Something massive in heaven is happening over me. Heavenly Father, I pull on your thunder. I pull on your spirit, God. I invoke your presence, my King. I need deliverance and I need you, Father. I come before you stripped, naked, battered and bruised as nothing. I bring into remembrance all the times you delivered me, all the times you set me free, my King. You are worthy of praise. I worship you publicly. I give you glory in secret. I stay my focus worships you. My thoughts expression worships you. The artwork and the gifts you put inside of me activate and worship you. My feet and my walk and my journey and my stability worships you. My surroundings worship you. The birds in my yard worship you. The flowers bloom and worship you. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. 
And I exalt you, my King, in the best way. And now through your Holy Spirit, I can't even worship your Holy Spirit unless you let me worship. I can't even understand unless you open my mind and give me the Spirit. Give me the Spirit of intense worship. Give me the Spirit of spiritual warfare worship. Let worship be my number one ministry, Father. Let me get on my knees, lift up my hands, and give you praise truly and according to the experiences that I've had with you and the revelation you've given me. And let me worship until the thunder of heaven starts to rain. I ain't even got to fight sin. I ain't even got to decree or declare right now. I ain't even got to prophesy. I ain't even got to go according to the value of the riches. All I got to do is worship, and you inhabit the worship of your people. And I magnify you, Father. I thank you that I'm able to make this video. I thank you that the devil didn't take me out because if it wasn't for you, all them dark principalities that were on me strongly, I would have fallen. They would have overtaken me. But you didn't let that because your, your blessing overtakes me. See, the greater Satan fights me, Father. I realize and I'm starting to understand you bless me according to that measure. And nothing can stop me as long as I trust in your word because your word is eternity. Your word is victorious. And if Satan cannot destroy your word and it cannot defeat you, he cannot defeat me as long as I focus on you and don't break my loyalty and my trust, Father. I worship you with my loyalty. I worship you with my sacrifice. I worship you with my agility. I worship you with my endurance. And I thank you because you have given me the spirit to do all things through Christ Jesus. I thank you for the strength and the empowerment. I thank you for the mantle and the cause. I thank you for the rise and the championship title, which is Christ Jesus. I thank you for the throne and the crown and the robe and the jewelry and the necklace, which is Christ Jesus. I exalt you, my king. Thank you for breaking demons off of me that I didn't even know were on me. Thank you for giving me the repentance and the spirit of repentance to make it right. Thank you for the restoration. Thank you that I can't get away with nothing, Father. Thank you that because if I could, I'd fall into temptation and I'd go to hell. Thank you that you don't let me get away for nothing. Thank you for allowing me to realize where you stand in the power and the movement. Thank you for causing me to rise in the Holy Ghost. Thank you that people do think I'm crazy and don't understand me. Thank you for consuming me with your fire. Thank you for giving me power in this alone walk. And thank you that all my failures, all the times I sinned against you, all the times I did wrong over 50 million times, yet you still have forgiven me. You've thrown it in the sea of forgetfulness and you continually cause me to rise. I thank you for being such a good God that you are. I don't speak from my neck. I thank you that I can worship you from experience. I thank you that I no longer just read the Bible, but I know the word of the living God through experience and through revelation. I thank you that I can come to your throne and that you speak to me and that you have given me gifts and you've given me power and I worship you with it. I don't do it for my own gain. I thank you for the sacrifice. I worship you, Father. My money worships you. My bank account cries out to you. My family worships you. My job, the hamburgers I make worship you. I worship you when I flip french fries. I worship you when I clean toilets and I glorify you, Jesus. Amen. I love you, Lord. With all my heart, all my strength, all my blood, all my mind, and all my soul. You mean everything to me, God. I've completely given up everything, and I'm consumed by you. I'm filled by you. There is no escape. There is no turning right or left. I'm on that narrow road, and the war gets intense and more intense, and the agony, but your glory becomes more real, and your splendor becomes shines brighter, and I can see your face brighter and brighter, and I can see the pupil and the fire in your eyes and all completion and fulfillment and destiny as I walk closer to you. And the throne gets closer, and eternity is living inside of me. Everything that you are, God, is living inside of me. All your pleasure, all your rewards. You yourself, not just what you have created, not just what you have done, not just what you have prepared, but you yourself is living inside of me. And the treasure chest of that is unfolding. This unfolding worships you. Hallelujah. Don't ever be afraid to say hallelujah. That's what they say in heaven. Go deeper in that hallelujah. Go stronger in that hallelujah. Mix in the word and your revelation and your meditation of God and your focus in that hallelujah. Watch it just go to the eternal flame and unfold God. You see inside him now. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would give me words of encouragement, words of knowledge, and that the listener would be empowered. You would sharpen their discernment. You would increase their vision. You would pour out your holy energy on them. And they would learn how to use it when they rise. And they would be energetic at their job. I release that and impart that to you. If you receive it, it's yours. Holy Spirit, I send the shockwaves in my body of revelation knowledge. The spirit of understanding, comprehension, recognizing what the Father is doing, living on heaven on earth, all the keys, the artifacts, the knowledge, 
the wars that I've gone through, I release my reward to whoever will take it. I release my reward, my reward to whoever will take it. If you receive it, take it. I'm here to release everything you've given me because I can't hold it all in. The more you fill me up and the more I hold in, the more it backfires on me. So I release every revelation God has given me, every strength, every ability, every talent the Lord has given me, every organizational skill, every heavenly thought pattern, the mind of the spirit, the gains of the spirit, the eternal gains through wars, through studying, through activating the gifts, through remaining steadfast, through learning new techniques in God. I release the technique of God to you. I release the axe, the rifle, a new sword, a new weapon. And Father, I ask that you would just reward this listener. You would crown them right now. You would pour the oil all over their mind and spirit. The prophetic would flow on them. What you have called them to do, the mandate, the position, and where they currently stand, you would show them. See, God can't show you too much in your current state. If God was to show you a bunch in your current state, you would become, conf trust me, I know. You'd become confused. It wouldn't be enough. You wouldn't be able to handle all of it at once. You'd be thinking about a million things at one time, trying to figure out all this energy, all this power, all this revelation here, here, here. You would not be able to take it. Your mind has to increase. Your spiritual capacity has to increase. You have to fulfill one calling and complete one mission at a time. Then God will expand you piece by piece, revelation by revelation. You'll be able to see this much, then it will expand. And you'll be able to see all this at one time. 50,000 revelations you'll be able to capture at one time. God operating in 40,000 different dimensions you'll be able to catch it at one time. Because your realization and the eternity will begin to fulfill. And it just gets bigger spiritually within. Not what people discern in the physical. You can't ever base the eternity of God off physical material items. And we try to do that. We try to compare God. And you can't do that. The reason why we don't get very far in the spirit because we mix God in with the world. We compare God's eternal magnitude and glory with physical, carnal items that have no identity, have no name. And because we compare, we're mixing in God, even though we don't realize and lack knowledge. And God's not being mean. He's not being bad to us. He's not being this big old rude, nasty God. But he can't mix in with that kind of stuff or that would twist and pervert himself. See, the Lord can't twist and pervert himself. So a lot of times when we're operating in a demonic mindset, even though we lack knowledge, gee, this is one of, I think this is one of the most, I always say this is the most powerful because God gives me experiential knowledge. He gives me direct insight and direct revelation on a certain scripture in the Bible. And then I live it and experience in my life. But I would have to say, when Jesus said, my people perish because lack of knowledge, I believe lack of knowledge is the number one killer. The number one reason why people don't grow in God to the fullness without measure. They don't rise in the anointing. They don't rise in financial prosperity on earth because of lack of knowledge. I stay gaining knowledge. I stay listening to apostles. I stay going to the head. I don't try to figure out on my own. I stay reading books. I stay around prophetic voices. I have mentors in Christ that are 75 million levels higher than me, and I stay under knowledge. I get showered by knowledge. I get so much knowledge that if I don't release it, I'll go crazy. I'll go cuckoo. I'll go cocoa. I stay filled with knowledge, and it constantly allows me to move in different spheres of God. It constantly allows my mind to grasp greater things, greater details, which activates God in a greater way, which allows him to flow in a greater way because I've moved in the sphere of knowledge and your mind is everything. So as my knowledge increases, my capacity increases, my revelation increases, my understanding increases, my experience with God increases, all tied to knowledge. Knowledge is tied to 75 billion things in God. If you just focus on stay getting knowledge, you will automatically overflow in this, that, this will activate, this will unlock, and you will begin to experience God on so many sides, so many angles, so many spheres, so many ways, so many blessings. You will feel new levels of joy, new levels of power, new levels of understanding. But above that, you will experience God in your intimacy where you speak at the speed of light in heaven, and you will begin to experience heaven, but God himself, and he will just take you. He's always taking us into new directions on a new path, on a new exploration, on a new route, on a new route, on a new thought, on a new ideal, on a new paradigm, on a new shift. These aren't just words I'm speaking. And these are parts of God and eternity that you can experience. Words, we think words are just words. Word, God is, he's, he said, he, I put my word above myself. If you knew how powerful words are, you go into the word, you experience the word, you pray in the word.
I have a vocabulary book and I'm expanding my vocabulary. And by doing that, I'm expanding my capacity and my creation ratio and rate. And God is able to feel this because I'm having new ideals in God. It's so hard on earth because we're always trying to do something in a process. We're always trying to do something to make money instead of just doing it to glorify God. When you do everything to glorify God in the now, it doesn't matter where you work, anything. I'm so grateful to even still be here and preaching and praying because the devil really tried to take me out. He's been trying to take me out, but I cannot lose because I'm in a covenant with God. I no longer have a self-will. I've given my self-will to God. I've given my mind to God. I've given my soul to God, my spirit. I cannot lose. And I can just literally see in heaven right now, wealth, revenue, just increasing upon me greater than I could have ever thought to do it in the spirit or even if I prayed and got financial prosperity. See, that's even carnal itself. God is elevating me and maturing me. We repent for sin. I always repent for sin. But as I mature, I repent for not recognizing God and what he's doing in my life. I repent because God is so holy and I repent for lacking knowledge and I repent repent because not giving God the glory when I should have and not realizing and capturing when I should have. I repent for those things as I mature. But the entire economy of heaven is in my home right now. And this whole time it's been here, but I just haven't seen it or my eyes haven't awakened to this greater degree of glory. And so the whole time we try to, oh, I need financial prosperity. We're complaining, we're whining, we're groaning, we're aggravated, we're stressed out, we're giving up a God when the whole time it was already right here. See, what you want in your greatest desire God can give you 50 million times more. There were desires you have, but there were deeper desires you don't even know how to pray. You don't even know how in your mind to comprehend that God will fulfill without you even asking. That's what he does. He likes to go past your own human, carnal, limited, even in your spiritual, you limiting things with your prayer. And he likes to satisfy you with a greater satisfaction that you didn't even know was there. He likes to fill you and satisfy a deeper longing that you didn't even realize there. You long for financial prosperity. That's a big one. You long to be reacquainted. But then in that reacquaintance or that prosperity, he takes you on an eternal level that you can't even, you didn't even comprehend. And he satisfies you 10 hundred times, thousand more greater than what you originally desire. God is greater than what you originally desire. He is greater than everything. He's greater than your desires. He's greater than your wants. So you have to focus on this greatness to go past your greatest desires. You can even go past your greatest desires that I just spoke about. That's a level and this is a whole nother dimension. The Holy Spirit's just flowing now, overflowing. Whatever is in you is going to come out. I'm filled with the waterfalls of heaven. I'm filled with the flow of Jesus Christ. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't do anything else. I've laid everything down for Christ. And eternally, I'm seeing the reward. I mean, I tell God I want financial prosperity, all that, blah, blah, blah. But eternally, the revelation, the power. When I lay my hands, cancer got to come off. When I command a demon at my job, I, there's some demons running. They come up after the club because I work overnight. And I said, ain't on my shift. And they left. They ran. People running to the restroom throwing up because the power of God is on my life. It's showing. The fruits are showing. The channels, the anointing on there, the music, the creation power. And even though I've been in this realm by myself, I've been just building in Christ. I've been pushing in my spirit. I've been doing push-ups in the Holy Ghost. I've been bench pressing my faith. I've been preparing. I release the Holy Ghost encouragement all over you. I release the Holy Ghost database system, fishing in heaven, fun time in heaven, new things, new things. We're always, you know, a lot of times the word's never going to change. As long as we're on earth, we're preaching Jesus. But a new experience I release upon you. A new feeling I release upon you. Do it now, Father God. A new touch of God on you right now. A new ideal to shoot across your mind. A new understanding to see as you just relax in God. Relax in God. Even as you take care of your children, you go to work, relax, and let God show you something. A 10-minute drive, if you would just sit there and relax before you get to work, God could show you eternity. He could download something in your system, but he doesn't, he's not able to do this because we limit him and hinder him because we're not allowing him to move in in our life. We're rejecting him and don't realize it. Just relax. And I command the God, the power of heaven to move on you in Jesus' name. All right, I was planning on making 15 more videos. The Lord told me this is going to be the last one. Short, simple. Short, simple. Short, simple. So, Father God, I pray over this video. I pray that a mighty wind from you would shift everything upon my life. You take me in to the promises to reach 
the land that you've called me to enter, Father. I ask that you would reward me. I exchange everything I've been through for you. As an act and a platter of worship, I ask that you would take it, Father, and honor it. Purify me seven times. And Father, open up my eyes. And everything I've learned, I went through, you've trained me, the trial, the testing. Let it all make sense before my very eyes, my God. I know that you are in control. It's not even me at war. The war has already been won. The enemy and my adversary has already been defeated. You are on the throne and you reign. So I walk towards that narrow path to your kingdom and your throne, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.